Hey everyone, my name is Matt, or Cryptic if you prefer, and welcome back to part three in this series of videos where I go through the process of modeling and rendering out this lightsaber project. Uh, this video is going to be dedicated to the process of going from Maya to Substance Painter. And so right now what you can see is I'm going through and I'm creating the material IDs that Substance Painter will basically use to identify each object and uh, texture and map too. So throughout this process, what we're doing is we're creating just individual Lambert maps that are color coded. Uh, the color coding doesn't really matter as long as it's something that you kind of recognize yourself. Uh, and really we're just splitting things into groups. So the blue, for instance, in this project is any of my like metallic details like stainless steel or screws or anything like that. And then everything else just kind of follows a different flow. The yellow would be like the rubber material on the handle and everything else is kind of just laid out in a way that allows me to keep them separate. One of the things I missed in this one is that I laid everything out and I didn't clear my transform history on some of the UVs I duplicated. And you can see that that caused me a bit of a problem right there. So I had to re-import my model from a previous save, which is why it's super important to save multiple versions of your files uh, because I was able to just re-import it. And uh, all I had to do is recreate the materials that I did to export the substance. So, that's why you'll see the colors from the beginning of this video don't necessarily match the colors that I used to export into Substance Painter. Uh, the reason is just because I made a mistake and I smoothed before I could actually uh, clear the transforms and history data on some of the objects that I used the transfer attributes to. Aside from that, it's kind of the same process. You're gonna go through, you're gonna create your layer IDs, or your material IDs, and then from there, I laid every single piece out on one UV plane. I chose not to use UDIMs for this process. I'm still kind of experimenting and learning how to work with UDIMs. So it wasn't necessarily something I wanted to do with this project. I'm thinking my next project I may work with UDIMs uh, just because it'll be something I want to teach eventually. But for now, this is pulling it in the substance painter and I'm just baking my maps, my general maps right now, which is going to be your normal, your world space normal, your ID, your ambient occlusion. All of those maps, those basic ones that you have to bake with your initial model import. With Vader, I wanted to spend some more time experimenting with texturing. I have used Substance to generate just kind of basic materials over the past, but this time I wanted to kind of push it and see what else I could do with it. So in essence, this project was actually kind of a challenge for me because I had to work with some new tools inside Substance that I haven't worked with yet. Um, but generally when I pull in the substance, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find some base materials, some smart materials that I can assign to my objects that'll get me on the right path. And then from there, I'll start to go and refine things. This is kind of helpful for me just because I like to use this as like my starting point, my baseline. And this is where I'll really start to kind of dig into things and establish what it is I'm doing. I find it's super helpful in Substance Painter to just establish kind of your base materials. Uh, for me, it just kind of helps me work through it. And then I'll look at my reference materials and just decide like what it is that I need to change and adjust. And uh, already you're getting a really nice result with just the base smart materials. So there isn't like a ton that needs to be changed. But with this project, I did want to push again some of those boundaries that I haven't necessarily tried to push with Substance Painter. Um, so right here, I'm tweaking the glass visor material just because I kind of knew that it was it was going to be okay for what I needed. It just needed to be like a clear plastic piece. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do here too is work with this brushed metal material to kind of get the more machined look that the replicas that I was looking at had, but it was, it was a little bit less subtle on them. So I had to kind of refine that and work on the flow with it. One of the things I've gotten really used to doing with Substance Painter is using these layer masks. So what I did was I overlaid a fill layer, I add a black mask, and then I'll go through and I'll just paint in these details. I know there's a couple better ways to do this uh, for this project. I probably could have done a little bit more, but I'm not super worried about it. So I'll just go through and color them. I'll just do like a rough paint job and then I'll go and just erase what wasn't necessary. You can see that with my UV, it wasn't necessarily perfect. I was having some weird distortion issues around these areas. They're so small, you're not gonna notice them. So I wasn't super worried about them. But if I were to go back and look at my UV, that's probably something I would focus on a little bit more is kind of cleaning those areas up and just making sure that 
when I pull them into substance, they're a little bit cleaner looking. Uh, I used to get very stressed out when I had issues like this. And then uh, I kind of reserved myself to just say like, you know, these things are going to happen. I don't have to be perfect every single time. As long as the end result looks good and you can't really tell, it's not a big deal. And that's something I try to teach people is like, you do not have to be perfect all of the time. There are going to be mistakes and just learn from those mistakes and do better in the next one. And if you have a project that requires that detail, take the time to actually go through and really focus and clean up. On these projects that I do, these smaller projects, I don't really have anything to answer to. So I don't have to focus as much uh, and as heavily on being perfect. You can see it up close, like there are issues, but when it comes down to the render, it's not really a big deal. I chose to use like the rubber tire material just because I figured I could adjust it enough to get it to like a rubber wire. I was doing a lot of referencing the colors on the lightsaber itself. Substance Painter has a nice color picker tool that allows you to click off of the application itself. And so I'll generally just go over and click on my reference image. And then if the material is not looking exactly the way I want it to, I'll just adjust it from there. But this is the same process. I'm just using masks and I'm coloring them while still maintaining that general base rubber material that I can adjust. So the cool thing is, is with that smart material, I can make any adjustment I want to. And then all of my fill layers are going to adjust with it. So I don't have to change each and every single fill layer. The head of the lightsaber presented some interesting challenges for me because I haven't really experimented with a lot of the uh, kind of different ways to map materials in Substance Painter. So this was kind of a challenge for me. When looking at the reference, there was a pretty evident amount of like bump. It was like a, uh, almost like a forged cast iron. And so with that, I had to figure out how to get that forged cast iron look uh, with using an existing smart material. So I spent a lot of time kind of troubleshooting and trying to add and figure out what it was I needed to add. And I think the end result that I added really worked the way I wanted it to. Even though it took me some time to get to it and figure it out, uh, I was really happy with the end result. And it also kind of lent itself to the end scratching because I wanted to add some details that made this look like, you know, it's been in combat, it's been used. Part of my goal for this project was to make this look used uh, instead of just this like pristine, clean, fresh prop. I wanted it to be, you know, marred. So one of the things I wanted to do was add chipping where molten whatever hit the blade and potentially melted the paint off or, so, or it smacked against something while they were running down a hall. Uh, I just wanted to add that detail. And this is where I finally figured out what it was I wanted to do. And it was just using a fill layer with a, a different set of normal properties. This is also where I started experimenting with the levels set up and then using the levels to control the height map. This allowed me to get the exact result that I was going for. Uh, and I was able to really refine it and get it to where I needed it to be because right now it looked way too rough. But then after a couple little adjustments, I was able to get it exactly where I wanted it to. And then again, I added another fill layer, added a black mask. And then from there, I used a couple different brush sets to add some scraping detail. You can see this rough pass that I did. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of it, which is why later in this video, I go back and kind of clean it up and tear it apart a little bit more but I just wanted to make sure that what result I was trying to get, I could get. And I think this worked out really well because the height map kind of allowed the texture to look like this was a chunk of paint that was ripped off of this thing. So it was once this nice pristine painted object, but you know, over the years, things have been chipped and damaged and it's been through the ringer a couple of times. A lot of the times I will hand paint something like this and uh, as I work on the model, I'll keep looking at it and then eventually come to hate it. I'll go back and start cleaning it up a little bit more. Uh, and then here again, using the levels adjustments to just kind of try to refine it and make it not look as thick as it was, as well as kind of darkening the color a little bit just because I didn't like how shimmery and shiny it was. Um, this is the part that I probably spent the most time on just because like I wanted this to be like one of the centerpiece parts of this model. 
And then in here, you can see I started going back and cleaning up a little bit. This was technically the second pass that I did on this. I think I did a total of three passes before I was happy with it. And this next part is where I really wanted to start playing with the concept of uh, dirt, like dirt and grime. So you think about this, a lightsaber is a used thing. It's something that somebody has used and carried on them. It, it's going to accumulate dirt, grime, skin, cells, all that stuff. You know, all that nasty, gnarly stuff that if you look at your computer mouse, it probably has on it too. Um, this is the same kind of look I wanted to add to this at, just to kind of ground it more in a realistic sense. So I spent some time adding a dirt material and going through and hand painting some of those kind of details that I wanted to get in there and then I carried it throughout the rest of the model to make it feel used and make it feel like it was grounded in reality. Uh, I think a lot of the time in CG and a lot of the time with students, uh, you spend a lot of time trying to make your object look perfect and clean and pristine. And when reality is, is nothing in reality is perfect and clean. Uh, maybe a car coming right off the lot, but even then, it's it's never perfect. And so the idea that we can add things like grunge and we can add things like scrapes and scratches, it's, it's really important to use those tools to your advantage uh, because in the end, it's gonna really help you ground things in realism. I decided to add a little bit of metallic to these uh, wires just because I was looking at some reference and I noticed that they had kind of a sheen to them. So I wanted to try to incorporate that. This is where I ended up having to do a little bit more hand painting. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was following the concept as, as cleanly as possible and I noticed that this was like a brass rod instead of a little stainless steel rod. And you can see some of the UV issues there. Um, again, they're covered up so they didn't really matter. But I just spent some time going through and hand painting this and just kind of cleaning it up and allowing it to give me the look that I wanted without spending too, too much time on it. And going back through this video, I noticed too that there are some areas that I missed. Uh, thankfully, they don't really come through, but you can see the cap on top of that cylinder right there. I didn't paint at all. So just an unfortunate thing that I missed, but I'm not super worried about it. Uh, this is one of the things I wanted to do because the plastic material I added was way too shiny. I wanted it to be a little bit duller. I wanted to make sure that it was, it conveyed that it was, you know, it was once shiny, but now it's a dull and kind of used material. And then the same thing for these grooves back here. I wanted to make sure I incorporated dirt into these grooves because these would never stay clean. I mean, if you're talking about a Jedi who's been through or, you know, a Sith who's been through multiple battles, these wouldn't be clean. They'd be full of debris and oil and gunk. So I wanted to make sure that they were actually filled with that instead of being this like pristine, clean looking, perfect object. And I think it really lent itself to the end design of it. This is also where I started to add the grunge details on the grip. I wanted to make sure I kind of controlled the depth that they were at because I didn't want them to be like muck caked onto the rubber. And then I go through and just kind of hand remove a lot of it with a scrape brush. Um, I was getting this weird issue where if I erased at a certain point, it would like delete a section of that model. I don't know what that was about, but I found a way around it. So sometimes I guess substance can be a little finicky, but I just went through, hand painted these, just kind of left a little bit of material behind because again, this would be dirty. This would not be some clean piece of rubber. You get something that's rubberized nowadays and you use it for a few days and you start to notice like it gets dusty, it gets gross. And so I wanted to make sure that that was carried through. Um, one thing we don't realize as artists sometimes is that, you know, as we touch things on the daily over the, over time with the age of things, like the oils from our skin tend to build up and generally just kind of muck up and dirty things. And so that was really important to carry over into this project. And I think I did a pretty good job at doing so. Um, I probably could have spent more time doing it, but I got to a point where I liked it. And I think it carried through the render pretty well. Some of it's not as noticeable, like these streaks. I don't think they really came through all that much, but for me to add that detail, I was pretty happy to just get it in there and, and have it look nice. 
part of the thing with painting textures and going through and adding detail on models is try to just look at it as realistically as possible. Um, things like these, the, the dirt, like when you add this dirt, look at it as you would as an object that was used in real, real life. Um, and I think that really will lend to you as developing your skills as a texture artist because I know it's helped me a lot just kind of examining real life objects. Like for this model, I looked at my mouse. I have a white mouse, which is not a great idea, but it really shows you the way a material can wear over time and get gross. And uh, it really helps in learning how to texture this the way I wanted to. With these smaller details, I could have added another dirt map, but I feel like it would have just kind of made the scene a little bit more just harder to work with. So I just decided to use a little black paint mask and uh, with the distance from it, I think it added just enough detail. And then this rubber pad on the inside, I wanted to make sure it was you know, black because the whole concept around this was to have a piece of rubber that when you press down, it pulled everything together. Um, really the rest of this was just adding a couple of shading details and just adding some things where I didn't necessarily like the look of it. And then I found a new brush that I wanted to use to try to experiment with scuffing the front of this up more. And so I used this to actually kind of accentuate the hand painted ones I did and give them a little bit more texture. Uh, I feel like in the end, it really added to the depth of these scrapes and they didn't anymore anyway, look so much as like I hand painted them. Um, because again, I wanted these to be like battle scarring. When it came to the wires, I wanted to just add a little bit of shadowing detail, uh, stuff that wouldn't really necessarily matter, but this kind of hides the way they connect to the body of the lightsaber. And I think it played pretty well to it. Um, and this is just, again, a mask with a little bit of a fill layer and then a couple different paint brushes. I didn't really add too much crazy detail to these. The wires themselves, I didn't add a ton of like texturing detail or anything. I just needed them to be basic colors and I added a little bit of grunge detail at the end of this just to make them look and feel a little bit more grounded. And you'll see, I'll just go through and clean these up a little bit as best I can and, and really just make sure they look like they, they feed into something because that's really the end goal here. Uh, and then I added this little fill layer. I changed the opacity just a little bit just to give it kind of a gray look, like a, a dirty wire. And I think, it, I think it turned out really well. I wasn't so sure about this part though, because from the reference I found, I couldn't tell if it was clear or if it was brass. So I ended up going with the bronze smart material and then I just kind of layered it on the inside. Um, I feel like it looks really good. And I feel like it really kind of uh, pulled the front of this together. So it didn't look like it was just a bunch of chrome. Uh, but at the same time, I'm still not necessarily certain on what that material is actually made out of. And then I decided with the screws, just to add a little bit of uh, darkening and where the, the notch is. I don't know if this was necessarily ne needed, but I think it lent to the, the end result. You can't really see the screws all that much, so it was probably a waste of time, but it's just one of those things where I like to go through and make sure I have as much detail and depth as possible. I, it was really important to me to spend some time on this project and not just put it in a substance painter and get the best looking result possible. Um, because again, if I had just thrown a bunch of smart materials on this, yeah, I probably would have looked cool, but it wouldn't have been as grounded and it wouldn't have been as like realistic looking, I don't feel. This was just me adding another grunge layer to the back because I didn't really know what else to do with the back. I actually ended up leaving the plug, that black portion right there. I left it as is because I think it looked good with the gunmetal material on it. And I didn't really feel like I needed to change too much with it. And then here I just added some uh, some dirt details. I played with a couple different materials or uh, brushes until I found one that I kind of liked. And I felt like it gave me the result that I was looking for. And a lot of this is just experimentation on my part. I didn't necessarily, I'm still kind of growing as a texture artist, so I'm still trying to figure out what it is I'm doing. And uh, a lot of this is just experimenting and trying to get things to match reference. And I feel like I did pretty well with this project. Uh, but in the end, 
this is the final export. I export the materials, and then in the next video, we'll get them added and start rendering. Uh, overall, I spent about an hour and a half in Substance Planner, and I think the results were uh, pretty good. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. It does help the algorithm so much, and I appreciate you being here.